Hello, welcome to the Monday, November 20th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storms and its Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Recently, a few times I've talked about Bitcoin theft. Uh, well, it uh, looks like we have yet another method how Bitcoins are being stolen. Didi observed in his weblogs an increase in scans for what looks like Bitcoin wallets. Apparently, a lot of people are careless and expose these wallets on their website using standard file names like wallet.zip or wallet.backup.zip. And the bad guys have figured it out now and are scanning the internet for respective files. These scans aren't all that new, they have happened in the past, but the frequency of them has certainly increased recently. And Pratt is looking at some recent malicious spam that he has received. Uh, this time, yet again, the good old roots of a fake resume. It doesn't actually push ransomware, apparently, this time. Now, this same family of malware has pushed ransomware in the past, but appears to have switched back now to banking malware. I wonder if this is a little bit of trend where the bad guys are getting a bit sick of ransomware and it's switching back to good old banking malware. But uh, one sample, of course, is a little bit early to call this a trend. And Big IP released an important update for its products that patches a vulnerability in TLS. Due to this vulnerability, it's possible for an attacker to decrypt TLS sessions if the RSA algorithm was used in order to exchange keys. Now, before you run out and panic and update all of your servers on this short week, let's look at some of the dependencies for this attack. First of all, you need to have a client SL profile enabled and RSA key exchange. Now, most servers probably do have RSA key exchange enabled, but then if you do use Diffie Hellman ciphers, then you are actually not vulnerable because just attacking the key exchange won't really help the attacker. Also, by default, Big IP is configured with what they call the generic alert option. That does not really return a lot of detail to the attacker. So with this option enabled, it'll take more work for the attacker to actually decrypt the session. And if you do actually require a valid client certificate, uh, then you are only vulnerable if the attacker is able to present a valid client certificate. So what it really comes down to, should you patch this week or next week? Well, uh, my answer to this is it all depends. Read the F5 advisory carefully, see if this applies to you or not, and uh, what you feel the risk is of leaving this enabled compared to the risk of applying a patch like this on a short week. Now, a lot of retailers, of course, may already have gone into some kind of holiday freeze on patches. Honestly, I have seen very little attacks against these types of TLS vulnerabilities. If you have to wait till January, if you can enable some of the mitigating steps or so, you should probably be okay. And talking about patches going bad, looks like one patch in particular caused some issues last patch Tuesday with Microsoft. And apparently what happened is that certain Epson dot matrix printers no longer worked after applying the November patch for Windows. Now you may say who still uses dot matrix printers. Apparently there are still plenty of offices around the world that use them and ran into problems with this patch. Microsoft now released an update that should fix this problem. Secondly, there's an interesting issue happening with the equation editor patch that Microsoft released. Apparently it looks like Microsoft may have lost the source code for this particular application. Typically when Microsoft Microsoft applies a patch, uh, they are changing the source code and recompiling the binary. Apparently that didn't happen with the equation editor. Instead, all that happened was that a certain part of the binary code was replaced with
without any apparent recompile of the code. This is of course much more labor intensive and also risky in some ways. So the assumption here is that Microsoft just may no longer have access to the source code for this application. And talking about Microsoft for one more story here, apparently Microsoft stopped implementing ASLR correctly in Windows 8 and later. This was found out by a researcher at CERT and in a blog post, he's actually describing the registry key that needs to be set in order to enable it to fully function. So affected is Windows 8 and later. Now, this is not a huge issue. ASLR is address space layout randomization. It's supposed to make exploitation of vulnerabilities more difficult. And since I mentioned them in the past a couple times, Startcom, the certificate authority that was caught issuing backdated certificates and subsequently their certificates were removed as being non-trusted, well, uh, they now decided to essentially just close shop. The announcement came from the apparent woe sign. Now, if you're currently using a valid Startcom certificate, you don't really have to worry right now. When that certificate expires, you just have to replace it with one from a different certificate authority. Their certificate revocation lists and OCSP server will still continue to work for two years. The official shutdown date is January 1st. So starting January 1st, 2020, those services will no longer work. I would recommend to switch as soon as possible because you never know if they're actually holding up uh, that, that deal and uh, if they're going to shut down these servers earlier than originally planned. Well, that's it for today. And remember this week, only three podcasts, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.